Do you ever feel like your house is running you and not like you are running your house? Do you ever feel like you need better systems when it comes to toys, paper, all the things that come along with being a mom and running a household? Well, guess what? I am sharing my three favorite home hacks when it comes to setting up a home, having good systems in place for toys and paper and all of the above, and I'm sharing them with you in today's video. My first tip that I'm a huge proponent of is to have a toy and book rotation system. If you are a mom and you're dealing with toys everywhere and clutter and fighting over toys and all of the things, I do think minimizing your toys is important, but I also really am a huge lover of toys and lover of having a variety to play with, especially in the winter months here in Minnesota when we can't get outside for as long as we do in the summer months, it's nice to have some different things to have my kids play with. However, I do not think you should have all of the toys out at one time. And a nice thing about getting gifts and things like that is you have a nice variety of toys, but it's nice to switch things up. So every single month I like to do a toy and book rotation. And so I have toys in three different areas in my home. We have a little area right behind our couch in our living room that has a cube unit with various toys that I switch out every single month. We have a playroom slash homeschool room downstairs that also has a small cube unit with toys that my kids can go to and take out, but is limited to how much toys can actually stay in there. And then my kids keep their own personal toys in their bedrooms. And we do keep a good amount in there. My kids play in their bedrooms a lot, especially during my work time, since I do work from home and run a business from home and homeschool at the same time. So my kids have a rest time every single afternoon and they play in their rooms. So I'm happy letting them have toys in their rooms as long as it's not crazy amounts to clean up and they're actually playing with them. So that's where they keep their special dolls and Barbies and doll houses that they get for birthdays and things like that that are just theirs unless they want to share them with the rest of the family. So what I do once a month, usually on a Saturday or Sunday when my littlest one is napping, I will go to our laundry room where I keep our toys and I have a bunch of bins that I keep right above our washer and dryer and I don't have a lot of storage space in my house. Like I don't have a really big storage room to keep this. So we found this was a good area to keep our toys and I don't really have them organized because I'm constantly switching them in and out. So I just get all the bins out, bring them into the playroom and then I take all of the toys out of our two cube units that are in the playroom and in the living room and I just swap out the toys. And there's only so much I can fit in each cube unit. I don't want them stuffed to the max. I want it to be stuff they'll actually play with. And I just rotate them out. It takes about an hour once a month. And then we also have a ton of books. I'm a former, former English teacher and a former daycare provider for little kids as well. And so I love me some books. I have collected a ton over the years at garage sales, through Usborne parties, and thrifted books and we also give a lot of books for holidays, birthdays, Christmas, that kind of thing. So I have a cabinet in our living room that's devoted to books. I have some that are categorized by type and then the rest are just different books and I will switch them out every month. We keep books in various different places throughout the house, some in their rooms, some in little book racks in the house and then in little baskets as well that the kids can take and look at and read on their own or we pull for story time. So I will switch those out once a month as well to keep it fresh. Plus, of course, we go to the library a lot, but it's just nice when we don't wanna to go to the library or we've read all the library books before it's time to go back. We have a lot of other books we can choose from and I'm rotating those out every single month. And it's just really easy, like the last Saturday or Sunday of the month to just rotate your toys and your books. I love doing this because then the books and the toys are always feeling fresh and new. They're not getting stale and they always feel fresh and new. So I don't need to go buy new toys to have it feel new. I'm just rotating the ones we already have and it feels like they're getting new toys when I didn't have to spend any money. This also is great for when they're getting more toys from Christmas and their birthdays. I don't feel like I have to get rid of a ton to make room for the new ones. I just add it to our toy rotation system. Before I jump into my next hack, I want to let you know that this video is part of a collab with a bunch of other amazing women here on YouTube and beyond who are all training in the Get Organized HQ virtual conference this September. It is a completely free online conference and we are all training on different topics to help you get organized and have a less stressful life. 
You can sign up for free using the link I have in the description. The conference runs from September 12th to 16th in 2022, but if you're watching this after the fact, don't worry. You can still check out the all access pass that will give you lifetime access to the over 100 different sessions. I will personally be training on crafting your perfect morning routine. It's something I love to talk about and you can apply it whether you have a business, whether you're a mom or not, and it's just a great training for those of you who want to have a better morning routine, but there will be tons and tons of other sessions that you can join as well. So after you watch my video, make sure you check out the playlist in the description and see who else is gonna be training in the conference and learn their own home hacks. My second tip when it comes to your home is to use your home how it works for you and add maybe some unconventional things to your home if it works for you. And I'm gonna share some of my own and maybe it will spark some ideas for you. First of all, my kids love to do art and they love to play with Legos. However, I still have a one-year-old who is getting into everything, who can choke on Legos, who I don't want getting into all the art supplies. So we actually added a bar height table into a little corner of our dining room for my two older daughters to do crafts, to play with Legos and do all the things I don't want my toddler getting into in a safe place that's still around the family, but is safe for my toddler. Now this isn't something most people have in their dining room, but it's been a wonderful thing for our family in this season of life. And it just helps our family still be around each other. My seven and four year old aren't getting frustrated with my toddler getting in all their stuff and they have a safe place to do those things that they love. And my one year old is still safe to not get into the things that she's not old enough to get into. We also keep a little craft cabinet and a whole console table in our dining room with various craft supplies and different sensory type things. So we keep Shopkins in here, which my kids love to play with, with Kinetic Sand and Play-Doh. Our Play-Doh is in here. We have a bunch of Duplos that my kids can spread out on our large dining room table. And then we have some gem art and other types of art that they can easily get to in the dining room, which isn't normally a craft space for families, but for our family, that is where we do a lot of crafts. And so it just makes sense to have it in the dining room. Like I mentioned earlier, we have a play area behind our couch in the living room. Our kids' bedrooms are upstairs and they like to be around the family as much as possible and my toddler is not old enough to play on her own in her room yet. So we like having some toys in the living room and I am all about having a beautiful functional home but also one that actually works with the family that you have right now and when you've got kids, they like to play. And so I like having this little designated area for toys the kids can bring them around the main floor of the house, but they all have a home that they can easily go back into and it gives our kids a little little space to be kids, um, but still allow us to have a separate area that's more adult, but just family oriented without a bunch of toys in it. We do not have an entryway in our house. We have a front door into the dining room and we have a back door that we use the most often and it does not have any kind of entryway in it. And living in Minnesota with five people in our family, there are tons of boots and coats and backpacks and scarves and mittens and hats and all of the things. And so I created a really inexpensive and functional and I think beautiful solution. So in our playroom slash homeschool room, that is where the back door is. And so we added a five by five Calyx unit from Ikea and I added pegboard to the back and that way I can switch up the organization with the different seasons, with different types of hooks and baskets and things. I added a mirror and then I anchored it to another two by three Calyx unit on the back to give it stability and also to give us a place for storage. And then I added a bench and another little two by two cube unit also for storage for shoes and my husband and my shoes. Plus we have a set of coat hooks on the wall and then a bulletin board for all of the schedules and things we have for all the things we're a part of as a homeschooling family and a family with extracurricular activities. You do not have to spend a ton of money and make something custom and built in to have an entryway in your home. You can get creative using Ikea products and just different things you can find at the home improvement stores and make your own entryway. The other entry in the front of our house goes right into our dining room. And since we don't enter from there a lot, we actually turned our really large coat closet that was there into a nice pantry because it's just off of the kitchen. So don't be afraid to turn different closets and different areas of your house into something that'll work a lot better for you. We didn't need coats up here because 
The only time anybody comes to our house from the front is if they're visiting and they don't really care if we hang their coat in a closet or just drape it over a chair, but we could really use a lot more space for pantry items. Our laundry room is a very unique layout and much bigger than most laundry rooms, especially in a 70s house. So we have utilized this space by adding a cube unit onto the desk that's built in in the laundry room. And that is where we keep our excess food storage that we stockpile for emergency purposes or if we just run out for whatever reason. And then we also have our toy rotation system in there. So if you have a certain room in your house with lots of extra space, find a unique way to add some more storage. We didn't have a lot of space for towels in our upstairs linen closet because we have three girls and so we have a lot of toilet paper and hair accessories and toothbrushes and all the things that come along with kids and hygiene. So we added two functional bookcases and a bench that all are white and then in that we actually store our towels, our excess bed linens, and some books but when you look at it from any other angle you would never know that it's storage it just looks really pretty and like it belongs there so if you can find something pretty that's also functional and helps create a solution for something you don't have room for in your house i'm all for that and then my third home hack is to have a system for paper i have a whole video on this but i just wanted to go over a couple of different things we do to help with paper clutter one big source of paper clutter headaches in our family with three girls is the constant artwork and crafts that they are making. So a few years ago, I added this nice wooden bin into our cabinet in the kitchen. So it's in a central location where they're often doing artwork and we often are. And this is where I just put any of their artwork that I think we might wanna save. So I usually will put it in there for a couple days. If I realize they don't really want it, I might throw it away or recycle it right then. But what I do, I don't even have a great system of like every six months or every year or every month I go through it. What I do is I just wait till it gets all the way up to the next shelf and then I will go through and recycle most of it. And then whatever I do wanna keep, we have separate file bins for each of our girls to save special schoolwork, special cards, mementos and things like that. And so I will bring them right up to their room put them in their file folder for whatever age they are, and then just start the process over. It's super simple. It's a self-maintaining system because as soon as I can't fit anything, anything else, I have to deal with it. And it's really, really simple. It takes about 10 minutes to deal with, which I love. I am a business owner, so I keep track of my receipts and we use the Freedom Filer system that I set up years and years ago and I really don't have to do a whole lot with anymore. It's wonderful. I just put stuff where I need it. And so with receipts coming in, Every single week, I just, whenever my wallet is getting full and I'm realizing, okay, I need to clean it out, I will just take my receipts and put them right into the file for whatever month and year we are in. And then when it's time to record keep, I know exactly where everything is. And for tax purposes, it's a really wonderful system. It takes a while to set up on the front end, but I set it up like eight or nine years ago and it's still going strong. And then any other important paper I need to deal with either goes into what I call my Sunday basket or into my planner. Now, I used to actually tackle my Sunday basket, and I have a whole video on that if you guys are interested. I used to tackle it every week, but I've just found that with homeschooling and things like that, I either put it in my Sunday basket and I deal with it um, whenever I just feel like going in there. It might be every few months or at tax season, and I will file whatever needs to be filed or deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. I usually put like cards and stuff that I need to go put in storage or just random things that I don't need to deal with but just want to save. I will put in there and deal with it a couple times a year. And then any other paper that I need to deal with very soon, like a bill or uh, an invitation or something, I just keep in a folder in my planner and then I look at that every week when I am planning and then if it's time to deal with it, I will fit that into my plans. But it's very simple, doesn't require a lot of time and remembering to do things. It's just something that has really, really worked well for our family. So those are my three home hacks. I would love if you would subscribe to my channel if you are new here and definitely go and watch the other videos in this collab and learn tons of hacks. And then make sure you register for the conference because it's gonna be so, so good. I cannot wait to see everybody's different trainings and learn so much, which is, this is a wonderful time of year to get some good systems going with back to school and heading into the holidays so that you can enjoy those holidays more and enjoy the school year even more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.